today I'm going to um talking about uh the Alacrix or ABC band versus the Aroto or uh, Rival Rockstar band. So uh how do we know which one is better? How we do we know um how to choose one of these medications for our patients. So first, this medication have uh, similar indications. FDA approved for stroke prevention in non valvular AFib or A2 fibrillation and the venous thromboembolism treatment for prevention for different thrombosis or DVT or pulmonary embolism PE. So first we need to look at um, the uh, renal function to choose this medication. Generally, Alacrix is better for people who have renal impairment or renal dysfunction. Um, most of the elderly people who are over 80 years old um, do have renal problems, you know. So um, we should start or initiate Alacrix instead of Yeroto for the patients over 80 years old. Alacrix, we need to use precaution um, when uh, serum creatine clearance less than 25 or serum creatine over 2.5. Um, for these patients with uh, significant renal dysfunction, we need you person. We need to monitor closely, especially uh, we need to test kidney function, the renal function, to make sure uh, patient has no bleeding. Uh, for people who have the creating clearance less than twenty five or serum creating over. 2.5. You might need to reduce the dose to 2.5 milligram twice a day instead of uh, 5 milligram twice. A day. For Yeroto, uh, we should avoid patients creating clearance less than 30. So I, I just mentioned should not start the roto for patients over 80 years old who have some kidney function problem. This medication generally uh, absolutely contraindicated in patients who have chemical heart valves, uh, active liver disease, like active acute, active uh, hepatitis, severe cirrhosis, uh, or significant LFT elevation. Um, if the AS or uh, the <coughs> uh, the AX the AXT or the ALT um, over two to three times their upper limit, then uh, we should not use this medication. 
people who are, are pregnant should not use this medication. For this side effect, um, the most concern uh, and common side effect is bleeding. So the Alequix is better than Yeroto um, for the uh, stomach or GI bleed. So people who have concern about stomach bleeding or they have uh, some kind of stomach problems uh, history, then we should start with the Alequix versus the Roto. Dosin, uh, the Yeroto may be um, advantage compared to Alequix because Alequix is taken every 12 hours or twice a day, but the uh, Yeroto uh, take uh, once a day or every 24 hours. Uh, but it's must take with a full meal, full stomach. So um, there is one advantage um, of the Yeroto compared to the Alaquix because it's take uh, once a day instead of twice a day. For people who have problem uh, to remember taking the medication, then they may start with Yeroto if they don't have any other uh, issue like a ble uh, bleeding risk or uh, kidney problems. Uh, for some patients, they need to use the feeding tube, and probably the Alquix is uh, recommended. This medication, they have similar drug interaction. Uh, they should uh, avoid the uh, some uh, inhibitors medication type um, CYB3A4 and PGP substrates so CYB3A4 inhibitor and uh, e GB substrate. They have similar antidote or reversal agent. Um, the Andesanet Alpha or Andesa, the brand name. So generally, uh, the Alequix uh, is uh, recommended more than the Yeroto, only a few uh, or some patients want uh, one daily dose, then uh, they want to start with the Yeroto. You let me know if you have any question on these two medications. Thank you. All right, the next topic I want to talk is um, Alequis versus Badaxa or Dabigitran. So um, they have a similar indication, FDA approved for stroke prevention in non valvular AFib, uh, Dina Trompo embolism treatment for prevention.
precaution um uh, so uh the aliquix should uh, be used in precaution when uh, the creating clearing less than 25 or the serum crane over 2.5 typically uh, we use the aliquix uh, with a lower dose when people have um, this level creating clearing less than 25 or serum creating greater than 2.5 Obadaxa, um, we should avoid when creating clearing less than 30. And uh, it's not recommended to start in patient with uh, creating clearing less than 50. So uh, creating clearing uh, at 60 or above is considered a uh, normal renal function. It, when it's less than 60, it's not normal. And then uh, when it below, when creating clearing below 50, then we should not start by that side. And this medication uh, contraindicated with patients who have uh, mechanical heart valves, uh, liver disease, active hepatitis, uh, cirrhosis, a significant LFT elevation. Um, when people have the AST or LFT, um, break that down two to three um, of their upper limits, then we should not start Aliquis or Badexa. Pregnancy, um, people who are pregnant, they uh, be avoided taking uh, this medication, Aliquis or Badexa. The side effect, uh, Aliquis is better uh, in terms of stomach bleed or GI bleed. Um, but actually, may increase the GI side effect. So people who have stomach problem like uh, peptic ulcer or um, the uh, colitis or something like that, uh, they should avoid uh, taking Badaxa. Dosing, uh, the Aliquic and Badaxa have similar uh, dosing. They take, uh, they should be taken every 12 hours or twice a day. Uh, for the feeding tube, Badaxa is not recommended. Uh, the, the Badaxa dosage form available in capsules. So the capsules cannot be crushed or opened. Uh, capsules may be stored. Uh, it must be a capsules uh, of the Badaxa, but be stored in original containers for about, uh, uh, <clears throat> when it's open, it's only um, good for three months to uh, maintain their efficacy. Uh, when it's open and then it's over three months, the medication uh, no longer have uh, the efficacy at its suit. So um, if we open the container, the container, then we should not use this medication if it's over three months. Uh, with uh, that issue, um, we don't recommend uh, people uh, to use the bubble bag, um, you know, 
for some hospital patients, they used to have the bubble bag for like 90 days set up. Um, and then this medication must store in the original container to protect from the light. Then they should not be used in the bubble bag setup. The Badaxa do not have uh, interaction with the uh, CYB384 drugs. Uh, it had a little bit different with the drug in the action. Um, the Alacrix had the antidote for reversal agent. Uh, it's called the Andesanes Alpha or Andesa. The uh, Badaxa antidote is the uh, Idag Rucizumab or Respite. So they have different uh, antidotes or reversal agents. So generally, um, Badaxa is less common than uh, Alacrix. But that's generally used for those people who have the good renal function and they are young. Um, otherwise, uh, Alacric should be started uh, in patients have the increased risk of bleeding, have uh, stomach problems like uh, Baptist ulcers or a GI uh, bleeding and have uh, renal function problems. And the big um, disadvantage of the Badaxa compared to Alacrix uh, is uh, the Badaxa cannot be used um, in the, the bubble bag setup for the hospital patient. Yeah, uh, the patient who uh, need to use the bubble bags for their um, medication or their for all of their medication. All right, if you have any further question or concern, why we choose the Alacrix versus Badaxa or why we choose Badaxa versus Alacrix, please let me know in the comment below. Thank you. Some of them. I know. So when you go to Google and go I know, there's a and it's a basically uh, or uh, Aina, or the range, the range of Aina is between two and three most uh, indications, uh, except for the uh, clinical mitral valve replacement or clinical heart valve Aina, or if I 
Uh, that's uh, that's correct. But for uh, the other special, uh, I and I will is two point five to two point five, and not only way by the uh, mechanical, but well. Uh, Sometimes, if you know people who have uh, um, different thrombosis or DVT uh, or the A, uh, the A, uh, AFib, uh, that cannot be uh, rolled by offering with the go to B. Uh, for example, people. Been taking often uh, with the INA twenty two and three, but still have stroke or still have uh, recurrent uh, DVT or P. Uh, they may increase the INA range to uh, two point five to three point five. Make sure. They not having stroke or the recurrent B or P when uh, they are at therapeutic level in the and sometimes uh, they have the patient additional uh, medication like aspirin. Then the current DVT OPD stroke can take over. Uh, and sometimes uh, some people uh, very high risk of bleeding, uh, they may want to have uh, those patients. The lower INR range may be, um, have to be below 1.8, uh, sorry, maybe 1.5 to 2.5. So, uh, for those people, they are very high risk of bleeding. Every different question is. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, vitamin K for, uh, for people who are on open, open as a platinum occasion for certain medical condition, if it is a different just or pulmonary embolism like PE or uh, AFib, atrophic uh, patient. So uh, for those people who have a boyfriend, most of people who have AFib um, and be detected boyfriend because uh, they have certain condition like mechanical but failed their body. So uh, how concerned about the vitamin K food uh, to uh, warfarin and other oral uh, anticoagulants like Alaplex, uh, Geronto or Badex. So vitamin K is uh, done not affect uh, other oral medication like Geroto, Alacus, and It does affect both. So when you take, uh, when you go to Google and you type vitamin K foods and both, you know, uh, 
you can find some information about uh, vitamin K food, what uh, food contain vitamin K, and some foods uh, contain more vitamin K, some food has uh, less vitamin K. You know, visual, you know, on Google, usually they have uh, all the uh, common questions like people also ask when you concerned about what they care and girlfriend. So uh, some questions like, can you eat foods with vitamin K on girlfriend? What food should be avoided uh, when taking girlfriend? What vegetables uh, are okay with girlfriend? The vitamin K uh raise your anna level so this is just uh, some uh, most common question uh, when people concern about vitamin k uh, when they are on work so uh in, <coughs> in general uh in general um you uh, should not stop Vitamin K food completely when you're on work. Because if you stop completely, um, it's not healthy to stop vegetables uh, completely or uh, stop greens completely. You should eat some um, uh, vitamin K, which is, uh, you know, out in vegetables. So you should eat some greens, um, but you, you need to be consistent with your vegetables. Uh, you should eat the uh, same amount of vitamin K or same amount of uh, greens every day to make sure your uh, work when stable in your body. You have to eat consistent. You need to know how to measure your vitamin K, uh, for example, uh, you know, spinach or kale contain uh, a lot of vitamin K. So uh, if you eat, uh, I would recommend that you should eat the uh, low to moderate amount of vitamin K. So if you eat uh, half of a raw spinach for one day, the next day you should eat like, you know, two or three cups of raw uh, cucumbers or tomatoes, like that. But uh, uh, that leafy vegetables or that leafy greens contain more vitamin K like kale, spinach, uh, light vegetables uh, contain less vitamin K, you know, like cucumber or tomatoes contain less, less, uh, less vitamin K. So uh, I would recommend that you should eat a moderate, uh, low to moderate amount of vitamin K, but you must be consistent every day to make sure uh, that uh, your often stable, uh, in stable line in your body. Generally, uh, you know, when you, when you see uh, this question, can you eat food with vitamin K on girlfriend? Yes, I would say, yeah, you can eat uh, some uh, food with vitamin K, but you must be consistent and you should know uh, how to measure the amount of vitamin K in each food in order to make sure you eat a uh, similar amount uh, every day. What foods should uh, be avoided when taking water? Well, uh, I don't think that you need to avoid uh, any uh, foods, 
when you are involved in, uh, especially the food uh, affect uh, your wolf and like greens or vegetables but some uh, foods uh, you know may um, you know affect your bleeding so like garlic uh, or some uh, uh, other herbals uh, it may uh, increase your iron now so it may in increase your bleeding so may uh, try to avoid those medic those medication like loss of bleeding uh, the, the vitamin K uh, does not increase your iron level or uh, does not raise your iron level decrease or is lower uh, your INA level. So uh, what it means when it's low INA level? So when uh, your INA low, you are uh, uh, at increased risk of blood clot. Uh, when your INA level is high uh, or critical, it's increased risk of bleeding. Uh, that's, that is uh, why you have to make sure you are in a stable uh, and in the, the, the range. Um, there are two typical range. One, uh, the normal uh, range for a certain medical condition like EVT, AFib, the normal range between two and three for the INR. For mechanical, Heart valve, uh, the uh, INA level is between 2.5 to 3.5. So it depends on medical condition, you have a different uh, INA range. You have any further question on this uh, topic or the issue? Please let me know uh, the, in the comment below. Thank you. Hello, Yachty. Uh, this is a good question. What is the difference between I don't know. Uh, I say uh, Motrin is a non inflammatory steroid. Um, but so uh, it's used for uh, mostly for inflammation pain, right? Age or muscle pain, muscle cramps, like that. Whereas the Tylenol is used for non inflammatory pain. You know, like my headache or my uh, fever or my pain. But uh, just pay attention on other side effects for each of these medications for you. So, uh, Motrin may affect your stomach like uh, ulceration uh, when you use very high dose uh, or you take uh, an empty stomach. So, um, and then it may affect your kidney. Um, also, so uh, yeah, when you take Motrin, you have to take uh, with a full stomach, and you, know, you can take 15 or 30 minutes uh, after eating. Um, and Tylenol is may affect your liver, so um, you should not exceed 
4,000 milligrams of Tylenol um, for any circumstance. So, um, generally, you take, you know, 500 to uh, 1,000 every four to six hours, but do not see 4,000 milligrams a day may affect your liver. Especially if you have any liver disease, you should uh, consider heavily um, when you take in Thailand. Um, and um, when you, you know, drinking too much alcohol, no, you should avoid taking talent. May uh, affect your liver. So those are the, uh, this is very important uh, to consider when uh, you should take talent or for motor. That's uh, pretty much, um, you know, what is different between high or open. Uh, if you have any further questions, please comment below. Let me thank you. Hello. Um, um, uh, this is uh, a very good question. Uh, lots of people taking fish soil nowadays uh, for your for their cholesterol um, and uh, other medical conditions such as uh, arthritis, inflammation, or uh, or their heart. So um, the uh, there are uh, some together action between the soil and open. Um Some people may experience more bleeding uh, or bruising when taking fish soil and open. So, uh, if you have any abnormal bleeding or bruising, um, you should uh, report to your doctor. Uh, anyway, before studying fish oil or, or any other cowders or herbals, you should uh, check. Um, the doctor who manage your warfront uh, to make sure he or she aware of uh, new medication or all the clouds that I include risk of bleeding when we are on certain medication. Such as Wolfram. And I think uh, fish oil may not affect other uh, uh, oral medication such as Alacrix or Europa. Hi. Uh, um, uh, it's a good question. Uh, basically, um, this is uh, a, a general question I used to have. Um, typically, it's no, we uh, should not take uh, modern why we are on war. Because uh, 
because uh, Baldwin um, is a non-formulary steroid medication. Uh, it may cause bleeding when take with the uh, anticoagulant, such as Wolfram or uh, Alequix, Yeroto, um, any type of uh, anticoagulant, uh, we should not take Motrin. So, um, if you are not allergic, um, not uh, uh, allergic to um, Thailand, you should take uh, Thailand or instead of uh, Motrin. Hello, uh, Yang Ting. Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, a lot of people ask me this question uh, when I uh, had to manage the comedy clinic. Yes, uh, some people have to take uh, both warfarin or uh, have uh, diabetes. So generally the jet to score uh, over two they should take uh, the anti-coagulant instead of take only aspirin. But some people uh, have to take uh, aspirin and warfarin uh, because they have additional conditions. For example, people uh, who take a warfarin for the um, um, AFib and they have to take a uh, baby aspirin for the stain. People who have the stain in their body, uh, they may have to take uh, aspirin for one year or so. Some people have to take the other end of the anti platelet like uh, uh, Blavix. So, uh, uh, depending on your medical history, um, your doctor or your pharmacist uh, will review whether or not you should take both aspirin or warfarin. Thank you for your question. Do you have any other further question? Please let me know. Thank you. I am thing. Uh, this is another good question. I think uh, generally um, for the major procedure or surgery, um, 
I would recommend to hold aspirin for seven days, but uh, you need to check with uh, the heart doctor to make sure uh, they are okay for the How to uh, switch from Wolfram to Helloquix? So um, you can go to Google and type in switching from Wolfram to Helloquix or ABC Band. And you can find uh, about 400,000 results. Okay, but the first few. Uh, website uh, help you to understand in how to switch from Wolfram to uh, Eloquix or other direct adding auto anticoagulations. So um, for Eloquix um, both um, Switch to the Eloquix when the INR are less than two. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, um, for example, if the patient INR is therapeutic at the Humidin clinic visit. Um, I used to have the patient stop taking warfarin um, about two days prior to starting the uh, elephant. So, um, you know, at that time I had time to uh, send out the medication to the patient. For example, if I overnight, uh, then the patient should receive the medication uh, the following day. Or if the patient uh, pick up the medication at the window uh, at the pharmacy, then the patient uh, have uh, the medication uh, ready to switch to the adequate from Wolfram. So again, um, it depends on the INR level, so we can um, in, uh, have the patient speak uh, from Wolfram to Eloquic uh, from the outpatient setting. So if the patient inpatient uh, or hospital line, then it's, you know, it's easy to uh, stop the Wolfram and try to retest the INR to make sure it's uh, less than two before uh, start uh, taking the Eloquix. It's more uh, easier um, for the patient to switch to the Eloquix when they're still at the hospital. But uh, if the outpatient um, management, then you need to uh, like stop the Wolfram for two days, um, if the INA at the therapeutic level, um, and then uh, start the Eloquix, make sure the INA less than two. Uh, if the INA a little bit high, you know, like 3.2 uh, or 3.3, then I would uh, go with recommend to stop the warfarin for three days prior to uh, uh, starting Eloquix. But what happened if the iron uh, at the, uh, uh, the, you know, really high, like 3.6 or above uh, in the time uh, visit, then I would recommend uh, to, uh, I would read 
you know, reduce the dough uh, or um, take up a batch of dough um, and then retest INA in one week to make sure INA level uh, uh, therapeutic before switching to the elements. And when the INA uh, at the therapeutic level and, you know, just try to hold one or two days uh, prior to the aliquids, uh, prior to uh, starting the aliquid to make sure that I know that's The COVID-19 caused uh, BTE, the uh, venous throm thromboembolism, venous thromboembolism, uh, the DVT or PE, deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. Uh, you can go to Google, uh, you can type COVID-19 caused ETE, it will show up, you know, about uh, 80, uh, 840,000 results. So the first uh, few uh, results it, uh, indicate that um, the patient with the COVID-19 infection uh, might experience an increased risk of venous thrombosis. Uh, the DVT or PE. So, and then uh, you can see uh, the most um, uh, in, uh, popular website um, in the medical field is uptodate.com. This also show that the COVID-19 patient uh, my experience in the coagulation disorder. Uh, and then uh, uh, in the following website, um, Boston Medical Journal.com is also show that um, the patient with the COVID 19. Um, uh, associated with the venous thrombosis. So, um, yes, the answer is yes, the COVID-19 might cause uh, the uh, venous thrombosis. So, um, I have experienced some uh, patients who have the COVID-19 vaccine and they are uh, experiencing the inquiry of the INA. So the COVID-19 vaccines might increase the INA number. Uh, it's not much, uh, it's about between two, uh, one, I mean, a like 0 0.5 to 1. Uh, for example, people uh, who normally have INA around 2.5, uh, they may uh, increase the INA to uh, 3.0 to 3.5 after uh, vaccination. So, um, but it does not last long. Um, usually they experience the INA increase in about three to four weeks. Uh, and after that, they uh, back to the normal target, normal range. So uh, in, in, in those three to four weeks, uh, the patient who have increased the INA due to the COVID-19 vaccines uh, are used to 
decrease the wolf and dose uh, a little bit you know like maybe uh, just uh, a half dose per week to make sure that I'm not, not uh, outrange uh, it's not uh, uh, super ther therapeutic so <coughs> excuse me so yes the some uh, some um, people have a concern whether or not the COVID-19 vaccine uh, affect the INR level or not. Yes, uh, they, uh, do, they, they do affect the INR level, but not much. Thank you. So how you switch from Eloquip to Wolfram? Um, you can go to uh, Google and type in uh, switching from Eloquip to Wolfram. Uh, you buy about 300, more than 300,000 results from this uh, search. Uh, but the top few website uh, have some uh, very important information for you. Uh, the, the first one say converting to uh, converting uh, the eloquence or this event. They uh, recommend start open and stop at this event three days later. So uh, this is correct, uh, but it depend on the open level. For example. Um, the baseline for Wolfram, you know, before you start Wolfram, you need to get the baseline Wolfram. Okay? And the normal, normal Wolfram is usually below uh, 0.9 uh, or 0.9. So around that uh, level is uh, normal Wolfram. The people uh, the, uh, never are uh, Wolfram. But how about if um, the Wolfram level at that time at the baseline very high, you know, like 0.2, uh, uh, I mean 1.2 or 1.3, like that. And you may need to uh, stop a this event maybe days or so. Um, and then um, the second option, they say, maybe stop at this event and then start the uh, ventral uh, antivalent or the uh, injection uh, antivalent. So, um, uh, like Lovenox. And then uh, Wolfram at the, at the uh, same time. So, uh, for some people, they are very uh, high risk of uh, stroke or um, high risk uh, of uh, complicated uh, uh, situation. So you need to uh, make sure that the patient uh, not have any kind of uh, life threatening issue. So uh, at that case you may when if you wanna switch to uh Wolfram, then you probably need to make sure Wolfram at a therapeutic level. Uh, in order to do that, because it takes about uh, three to five days in order to make sure that I now get to the uh, into the therapeutic level. Uh, in order to make sure that they need to have uh, some form of injection, like low not injection, uh, to make sure the patient is not risk of uh, having stroke or uh, dangerous blood clot. So that's uh, uh, about uh, what you need to know when you uh, switch in from eloquent to open. But you 
you need to make sure you have the baseline iron line. And then based on the iron line level, you may need to uh, and to make sure when the shift is up, the dialogue breaks. Now maybe three days later, if you have no more baseline iron line, if you have high uh, baseline iron line, then you might need to consider to stop the allied quicks um, a little bit sooner. And then if you uh, think that the patient is very high risk of having stroke or a dangerous blood clot, then you need to make sure that you have some form of the uh, injection, uh, like low vein of injection, make sure um, the INR level at therapeutic um, before uh, you stop the lobin of injection. Make sure the patient not having uh, having stroke or dangerous blood clot, like blood clot in their lungs. Thank you. All right, so how do we switch from uh, Wolfram to Yeroto or Rivalox again? Uh, this one is a little bit different. Uh, you know, we can go to Google and type switching, uh, switching from uh, Wolfram to Yeroto or Rivalox again. Um, you have about more than 400,000 results. And, and for the first uh, few ones, uh, there is some uh, uh, information that uh, tell you how to speak to uh, Yeroto from Wolfram. So right here they say from Wolfram, stop Wolfram and start Yeroto when I am less than three. Uh, you know that uh, for the Alequix or Badex, uh, when I uh, uh, are less than two, but for your author is that than three. Why? Why is different? Uh, because your auto is kind of a uh, little bit, uh, it has a uh, little bit longer half flight. So, uh, when it has longer half-life, I mean it, the medication lasts longer, um, and then it take uh, or it take longer time to get to uh, uh, the peak effect. So you know when the eye is uh, less than three, uh, so you. Um, you, know, you stop the work and, and start uh, Yeroto. It takes some time for Yero, Yeroto to work in your body. Um, so that's why they uh, want the iron uh, less than three instead of less than three. So, uh, uh, and then the same, uh, similar to uh, Eloquix, you know, if the patient had the life threatening. Uh, blood clot or uh, having high risk of stroke, then you may need to consider the uh, uh, antagonist injection, uh, injection, like luminal injection. So, uh, I mean, when, when you uh, want to uh, switch from uh, a, a year old to walk, uh, and then you might need to uh, consider the going uh, up injection to make sure um, the patient don't have any uh, stroke risk or any uh, life threatening blood clot. But when you switch from warfarin to uh, uh, Yeroto, 
then you only need to know uh, when the ion uh, is less than three. Then, uh, but uh, it's different from the uh, uh, hospital libation and the elevation patient. So for uh, in the hospital, you know, you, you may uh, monitor eye now uh, or recheck eye now, maybe daily basis to make sure I now less than three uh, before you uh, start in the open. But how about the outpatient setting? You know, you don't do the eye now daily basis. Uh, how do you plan for that? Uh, for me, you know. When the IMR, for example, at the uh, elevated IMR, then yeah, I just uh, tell the patient to stop the uh, the open, and I overnight the yellow toe, or I send the patient to uh, the pharmacy window so they can uh, pick up uh, the. Uh, Yeroto and start the Yeroto uh, next day, the same schedule they are taking a uh, warfarin. So when I know the INA is therapeutic, then you know it's between two and three, then I'll say go ahead and stop the warfarin for tonight and start the Yeroto tomorrow. And I know the patient uh, will receive the medication at window or you have the patient tomorrow be the overnight service. And how about if the eye is not too low? You know, if it's too low, then, you know, I would just say take half the warfarin uh, at, at their schedule and then start the yellow, yellow toe the next day at the same schedule of warfarin. Um, what happens if the eye is not too high, you know, like, 3.5 or uh, 3.5 or uh, uh, 4 or uh, you know or about 3. So if it is about if the ina about uh, a 3.2, then you know I would just say uh, stop the uh, warfarin for one day. And then and, and go ahead and check uh, Yellow to the next day. But if it's 3.5, then I might uh, recommend to stop open for two days prior to take uh, uh, Yellow to. If it's, you know, 3.6 uh, or above, you know, like four, and then start stop the Yellow to for two to three days. But if it's you know more than four, then I will have uh, to hold the dose and I have the patient to come back, uh, you know, in one week and to retest the iron now and go from there. But you know, I don't. If it's uh, about four, then I have to have the patient to recheck the iron now. That's uh, that's how uh, I. I uh, switch from a wolfing to a